Hello, welcome back to C language programming. Ah, the anatomy of the program. Okay. Our question was for loop. Okay. One thousand times using for loop. So we're going to deal with another loop structure, a control structure, which is the while loop. Okay, so this is the the syntax for the while loop. You have, of course, while, then open, close, parenthesis, then the condition. Then, if you have more than uh, two statements, or one statement more than, or two statements, then you'll be using the open brace and the close brace for the start and the stop. Then, looking at this flow chart, so you have here the decision block the diamond shape so it's the condition of the while statement okay yeah it is true okay then the code here will be executed then it goes goes back you know while it is true you now the condition still is true but when the condition is false is false then it will Except the loop. Okay, so this is an example of the for loop. No, you're printing a over one thousand times. Then this is the equivalent code for the while loop. So you notice that it is seemingly the same, except that you need to uh, declare x, no, the initial value or in here in the for loop it's the lower limit so the lower limit of x is zero then the upper limit uh, or the condition so while x is less than 1000 and it is initially zero so it will print hello world for the first time then there is a post fix increment okay it will increment the value of x so it is now one until it reaches 999 because when when it is 1000 it will accept the while loop okay so it's similar to the for loop the advantage of having a for loop because the lower limit the upper limit and the increment is uh, placed within uh, one parenthesis whereas in the while loop you know, it's scattered all over the the codes okay so the next control structure is the do while you know, it's the opposite of while it will first execute then it will evaluate the condition so you do f do it first then while so in, in in the flow chart it will first execute this statement then later it will evaluate the condition if it is still true or false if it is true then it will continue looping okay until it will accept it is false and the condition is false then we with the for loop with the do while loop so it's similar to while loop you notice the do and the while was exchanged or uh, interchanged okay then the, the, the one of the things that should that should be noticed is the semicolon no, the 
the terminator which is the semicolon okay so that's it for the do while we're going to complete the three so this is how we're going to do it in the do while and the while now the initial value of your x is placed outside the loop whereas in the for loop it's inside the open and the close parenthesis it is within the parenthesis okay so you notice the while is in the top portion while the do is uh, in the do while the while is at the bottom portion so take note of the semicolon so that's the only difference go now control structure okay so which is the if else no? so if else is another control statement and see that is used to perform operations based on some specific condition the operations specified in the f block okay are executed if and only if the condition is true okay so this is the part of the f structure fl structure okay so we'll enter first the condition or decision block if it is true then it will execute the code within within the, the braces okay however if it is false it will not execute the code no? within the within the braces so it will skip that part and go to the next uh, statement or code Example here, how the if structure is being uh, implemented. So we have here if number modulo 2 is equal to 0, okay, print the number is even, okay. So therefore, this program is actually to determine if the input number is even. So therefore, the, the first few statements will actually allow the user to input a number, to enter a number, and it will be stored in the variable number. Then take note, the parent sign is which means that it will uh, implement number divided by 2 and will take the remainder, or simply number modulo 2, which is returning the remainder okay so side this is the equality sign of operator okay so the code implemented in code block an example is if you, if the number inputted is 4 then 4 is an even number so how will you know that the number is even if you're going to divide no? if you're going to divide the number by 2 and if it has no remainder or simply saying remainder is equal to 0 then the number is even but the question is if the number is so what happened there's no out it's not the code that it will output if the number is an odd number so because it is that's why we need false statement okay so technically the first statement or the first condition will be the if the second condition will be the else so that's why it's two conditions only Going back to the same problem, we'll determine if the name num uh, the input number is even, the same uh, or odd. So there are now two output even and odd. So therefore, 
after the if statement then you add else that's that makes it if else if then else then you simply print the numbers add because there are only two scenarios it's either even or odd the result of having a number modulo 2 it's either equal to 0 or no remainder or equal to any number other than 0 so that is else so that's why it will print the number that it is add this time you know, else no, else print the number 5 is add number okay that's why 5 is odd number so are before we continue there are, there are a lot of operators no? post fix binary multiplicative additive relational equality the logical operators and assignments okay these are the basic ones the advanced ones would be a shift the bitwise and or, or the bitwise logic okay conditional so unary uh, unary no uh, let us uh, remember that the exclamatory point means not no? then in the multiplicative we have this Asterisk as multiplication slash as the division, then the percent as the modulo or the remainder. And in the relational, we have less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal. Then for the equality, of course, you have double equal sign, and that's equality. If it has only one equal sign, then that is assignment. Let's say x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 10. That is assignment. On the other hand, if it is exclamatory equal, that is what is meant as not equal. No? Then for the logical end, you have 2 ampersand and the logical or you have this. Okay. So we go now to or we could say else if nested or also known as multiple conditions or other say else if ladder okay so you have the first condition if then the second condition is else if condition two then another condition will be condition three ls else if condition three and so on and so forth okay so this is the nested flowchart if the condition is false it will not proceed to the first statement it will go to the next no? decision block that's why it's called nested no? false if it is not uh, true then it will continue on the false and so on and so forth so that's how uh, the else if ladder or nested if or else if it's being implemented in so going back now this program will determine if the input number is even or not but this time we're gonna use else if instead of else so this time we simply add if after uh, writing uh, else so if number percent or modulo 2 this time it's the opposite of equal to 0 it's not equal to 0 it could be 1 it could be 2 or negative 1 and so on and so forth if it is a negative number okay then you simply print that the add the number is add number Secondly, seven. No? Seven is an odd number. Okay. 
So we have this problem from to calculate the grade of the student according to the specified score. Okay, so these are the grades, the grade point representation. Then you have this, the score. So it seems that passing is 70% because it's 3.0. The perfect is 99 to 100, that is 1.0. Then failure is 5, no? below 70. So, using a brute force method, no? just all if, no? there's no else. Every code is using only if. So, this is brute force method because you notice that the range here, 99 to 100, no? the score is greater than or equal to 99. So, this is the, the logical operator and. And the score is less than or equal to 100. So this is a range, no? 99 to 100. So this is how we're going to do to do it in uh, operators, no? Operator and the range 99 to 100 means add, adding a uh, and condition. Then print if your grade is one, okay? Then going back. 1.25 is 95 to 98. So this one, score is greater than or equal to 95%. Score is greater than 90, greater than or less than rather equal to 98. So that, that is also what is meant by 95 to 98 in a range. Okay, so 1.25 and so on and so forth until you reach if the score is equal. 70, so which means your grade is 3.0. Now, if you have a score that is less than 70, of course, it's a failure. Okay, so we're using this uh, operators, uh, if with the operators, and this is also what is known as a brute force method because you're defining uh, all of the possibilities now of the scores. Now. Will it be 99 to 100, 95 to 98, 91, and so on and so forth? Okay, so, in this example, let's say the score is inputted is 77, so it will give you 2.5. Let's check if it's correct. 77, so 77 is between 78 to 78, and that is 2.5. So, here, 75 greater or equal to 75 and score is less than or equal to 78 so 75 to 78 so that's 77 uh, 77 is including this range that's why it's the 0.5 on the other hand we can improve the, the brute force method no? because in, in the brute force method The scanning, no? the scanning of the program will be always no? from top to bottom. Even uh, it, there, there's only a, the, uh, there is a condition that was already satisfied. Okay, it will traverse no? from top to bottom. However, uh, said if, if if the first statement is already uh, satisfied, the condition is already satisfied, it will no longer traverse the rest of the else if, okay, as well as the else. Okay, and you notice that in, in this scenario, it is sequential because the score is greater than 71, okay, it's a, is greater than 71 then it's possible that it's also greater than 75 okay so it's not from the bottom but rather from top to bottom let us say uh, the score is 77 it will first evaluate is it the score greater or equal to 99 no so it will uh, go to the next uh, if else if greater than 95 no until it reaches here if the score is greater than 75, 
which is 77 actually it, it will uh, execute the statement your grade is 2.5 and it will no longer goes down here okay Uh, what is your score? So let's say the user input 89. So it will uh, first evaluate is the score greater than or equal to 99? No, it will first go to the next first. Else, if is it greater or equal to 95? No, is it greater or equal to 91? No, is it greater or equal to 87? Yes, then it will print. 1.75. It won't uh, traverse to the next uh, else if because if it will traverse the next else if 89 is still greater than 83. So it will also print 2.0. But in this, in our case, it did not. No. Okay, so now to the combination of loop and if else uh, control structure so in this example make a program that will determine if the positive so take note positive only input number is even or odd without using the operator modulo now is it possible to determine a positive number or integer if it is even or odd without using the modulo operator. So are you going to do this? So you make first a rhythm in the form of a flowchart. Okay, you remember your flowchart. Okay. So the idea is the rhythm is continuously subtract or deduct the number with two or number minus two until it becomes zero or less if the number becomes zero okay let's say you have 10 constantly subtract it with 2 it becomes 8 6 4 2 0 so therefore 10 is an even number however if there is if the if it's if it's not no, it becomes less then it becomes an odd number Okay, so this is now our chart. No? So the oval shape connotes the main start or the start. Then followed by a process rectangle. No? Rectangle, it's, which means process. So it will initialize n or declare n as an integer. Then the parallelogram block is uh, accepting an input no, for the value of n. Then followed by a loop. No? This must be the loop. Okay. As long as n is greater than 0, it will constantly subtract n with 2 or n n new is equal to n old minus 2. So, okay. So, n is equal to n minus 2. Okay. It will keep on looping while it's true. No, it's greater than 0, the value of n. Now, if it is now false, no, it's no longer greater than 0. It's either 0 or less than 0. If it is true, then the output is even is false then it is said to be odd then n okay so that's flowchart let's try to translate flowchart to our code okay so the main start with this main function by duplication of the variable okay n then scan f is actually uh, the one that is accepting input okay and stores it to the variable n and this is the l 
Cooking structure or the while loop. Okay, so while n is greater than zero, and then in the decision box, n is greater than zero, then if it is true, then it will constantly subtract n by two, just like this one. It is true. We'll keep on subtracting n and two until n is no longer greater than zero. So the result of constantly deducting it by 2 becomes either 0 or else. Okay? So if you go to 0 or 2, then simply print the number that it is even. If it is false or else, then print the number is odd. Lastly, the close base is the now, in our input, the input is 99. Okay. So, if it is 99, then the output is the number is odd. So, these are your assignments. It already in this step. Make a program to calculate the letter grade. Actually, this was in ADMO, Ateneo. De La Salle. Ah, the Ateneo de Manila University. Uh, just, just look at their, their page, no? the letter grade. And uh, the second assignment is make a program and draw the flowchart in handwritten. No? That will determine if the input integer, this time both positive or negative. And it will determine if it is odd or even. Again, without using modulo or the remainder operator then it must be both using loop and if else control structures okay thank you for, for your time bye bye